course, the Upvo Squad brings you up close and personal to your favorite and, of course, the shining stars of the Zambian and regional entertainment scene. She has been running the game since her debut onto the scene with an amazing song featuring JK. Since then, winning awards, running the brands, and, of course, being the queen of the, the new school as well as rap. Joining us virtually is the one and only Cleo Ice Queen. Hey, Cleo, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well, okay. again, how I'm, I'm so Diamond. excited. I'm excited to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. As Amazing. Always. Amazing. Now, I want to start off with the personal life and get it out of the way because um, you are very private. You keep a lot to yourself and, of course, within your home. We don't see as much. But recently, you even put up a picture of your son and saying, train up a child in the way that they should go. Where do you draw the line with how much you share on social media? I think it just goes with how I feel most of the time. And I think I've wanted my focus for the longest of time not to be my personal life, but rather my talents, my music, you know, what I have to offer. For me, social media is a working space. It's not really like a personal blog for me. It's more of a working space of how it's like a resume for me. It's like my CV. So I don't think anybody flaunts their children on their CV. So, I mean, it's different for everybody, but in my personal capacity, that's what it is. And that's where I sort of draw the line. Every once in a while when I feel it, when I'm compelled to, then I can do it. But it's not really the focus of what my career or what my brand is all about. I love the fact that you've mentioned that social media is your CV. And that is something that we've really noticed. Because Wellington and I are always talking about how sometimes artists forget to update their social media platforms only when they're about to release a new, a new song or a new, a new album, but that's not the case for you. You you are always somehow always posting and always including your fans as well. Does that ever get overwhelming sometimes, always having to choose what you have to update and what not? Well, I feel like, yes, sometimes it does get like that because you're under pressure sometimes to be like, even when you're in your quiet space and your quiet zone, you can't really take the time out and be like, oh, I'm not gonna post or whatever because it's going to have an effect on you and 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 your career and what and what your social media presence is all about so you don't really have the time to to sit back i mean it's an advice to take a social media break every now and then but if you're going to do that i would rather that you plan out your content mm. for the next for however long you intend to take the break and have somebody post it for you so that you can take your little time to yourself and log off of the virtual world mm -hmm. and get in touch with reality. It's very important to do that sometimes, but seeing as it's a business for us who are with the careers of, of creating, it's, the career you it's chose. important that you plan it in such a way that, yeah, even if you take a break, you're still sort of active. That is that is amazing. Now let's speak about some milestones. From family milestones, we move to career milestones. You were recently in Nigeria, I think last year, where you finally walked away with an Afrima rapper. They gave you that status. Have you owned it? Are you like the best female rapper in the country? Have you, you know, solely taken up that title? Because we know you're a queen. You you know, winter's coming, like you always say. But how how is that how was that moment for you? Just walk us through it. Um, the Afrima Award, I think you're actually mixing it up with Bombshells, which was the best female rapper. Mine was the best female Southern Africa. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, to be honest with you, when it comes to things like awards and accolades, it's not really something that you feel like, um, it's not something that you choose, you know? People vote. So, <laughs> people voted. <laughs> and that is that. And... For me, it's just like uh, encouragement. It's just like, you know, keep pushing. There's many times I felt like, you know, sometimes you just want to give up. I want to do something else. So, you know, let me try something else. And then things just keep on happening. Like the time I got nominated for that Afrima, I was literally on on the edge. I was on the verge of like, you know what? I'm tired of this career. I'm tired. Everybody gets to that point in their career, no matter where you work. You just feel like, Nale manav with you. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I got into that point and then the, the nomination came, you know, so I was like, okay, fine. You know what? Let's just push. Let's push. These, let's push. Let's try and get to Nigeria. I tried to get my team. I got my team of five of us to Nigeria. So it was just all the more blessings that we actually won that award, which told me, you know what? Just keep on going. Just keep going. And um, I want to see what will happen 
if I don't give up. That's my new mindset. I love that you have a new mindset, but that's a word. I feel like she, you know, when those moments come without that award, what other things keep you going as clear your ice cream to ensure that you're still being the queen that you are? Just having um, purpose in life. Education is a big thing as well. You know, I'm always learning and um, also just I think that's why I poured out my passion into doing the Leaders of the New School EP because I just felt, you know, sharing this platform that I have with um, younger acts and younger talents that still have a, a long way to go, that still have so much more ahead of them. It just felt like tapping into that energy was going to also rejuvenate me, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm, I'm pouring, pouring back into my community, pouring back into my people, sharing knowledge sharing experiences and you know there, there's still obviously the the aspect that i still remain influential whether i do music or not you know there's, there's the fashion aspect to me which i i don't take the credit like you know i'm not a fashion <laughs> i just wear what i want to wear and you know and you i take good. the time to kind of thank you i take the time to analyze and look at what should i wear so there's a lot of effort that goes into it so slowly being recognized as a fashion icon of the sort so they, it's always still going to be that influential aspect to me and i felt there would be a way to survive you know through giving back to the community <laughs> brand endorsements mm. which is my biggest paycheck you know it's mostly mm. brand endorsements we can i can't really say i've got a million streams on spotify so i'm making so much money i'm not doing world tours mm. so the music is not directly bringing me loads of cash it's more of my brand endorsements that bring mm. you know most of the big bucks because the yeah. brand has it's, it's eloquent, it's, it's, it's got good etiquette, you know, it's a reliable brand and all of that. So that's what I was kind of thinking of, I was going to focus on and yeah, just start yeah. to like <laughs> think of hanging up the mic and etc. But I don't think that time has come yet. It hasn't, come it on. hasn't. <laughs> and thank you so much for not hanging up the mic because mm -hmm. Leaders of the New School turns a year on the 27th of May. This was the first album or EP or project you gave us with Def Jam. What are you most proud of, you know, of this particular project? A lot of people, I remember we were so excited about it. We were looking forward to who's going to be on it. And then you say Def Jam and we're like, our oh, people are on Def Jam. We were screaming literally. What are you most proud about like the accomplishment that leaders of the new school opened up for you that's so beautiful that there was excitement for that i think the most amazing thing was i did get a call from the def jam team and they did ask about you know some of the people that i featured on on the ep they were really intrigued about them and that just made me proud to show these mm. guys that there's so much more talent where i come from and i feel it was just um a blending of energies and synergies and just giving that unity of these futuristic acts that are about to take over on our music scene giving them that platform to shine and just you know sharing this experience together when we put together the concert the leaders of the new school concert that was also another amazing experience you know a world-class stage for us with um world-class performance style live band all of that for us was just yeah, I, every single song on there is so dear to me. Every single artist on there is so dear to me. And when I see each and every one of them, you know, doing something significant with their time and their career, it just really makes me so happy and so, so proud. Cleo, I know I'm probably a year late, but I, I, I will be, I'll beat myself up if I don't ask the correct pronunciation for the acronym of Leaders of the New School, because Wellington and I, <laughs> we always go at each other like, it's not nice, it's not does Please. It, does does, <laughs> does the it acronym have, have a name? Does it have like a pronunciation? Of the school? Yes, it, it, it's it's lotness. It's lotness. Oh, yeah. lotness. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank up. you for that. At Let's least I sleep like, better. Like, you know, almost like a lochness. Like a creature. Yeah, monster, the lochness monster. monster. You know? 
Yeah. So almost like that, but with the T. So with the T. Yeah. Mm. We got it. it. We got it. Let's so speak about the music. Let right. us speak about the music. You've mentioned the brand has taken center stage. And I remember you talking about how you took time to work on the brand, deliberately build it, ensure mm. that everywhere you go, glam is on fleek, makeup is on fleek, outfits are on fleek. Let's talk about the music itself. Now, there's been a lot of conversation about our music as Zambians, and that's mm -hmm. why hopefully Cleo does join us again but I wanted to ask her does she feel her music is out of touch with what's being made or with the local people because that's that's a very unique factor to it everybody keeps saying we need to find our own sound as Zambians we need to stop trying to imitate other people but then I feel like let's not narrow music down music is a form of expression and people express themselves differently mm -hmm. i feel like that's that's what i would say about this debate that has been going on like mm -hmm. Like, let's let limit people. But I really want to know. Would Cleo's love to answer. hear from her. Would love to hear from her, and also would love to hear from you. Remember, there's a number on your screen right now, Cleo. Hi, are you back now? Hello, Cleo. All right. As we try to connect her again, remember we want to. If you are able, to sorry, I lost you there. I can barely hear you. Somebody's trying to call me. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you back now? Do we have you now? Yes, yes, much better. <laughs> yeah, so I here. wanted to ask, do you feel like your music is out of touch with what the Zambians want to hear right now? Um, to be honest with you, I feel my, my fan base is very broad. Mm. So it's very difficult to, to just pinpoint and say, this is what is going to please this audience or that audience. So I've just gotten to the point of, creating and trying to be as diverse as possible not limiting myself to to genre let's mm -hmm. say rap is in my blood yes but i've just decided to be a creative that just creates mm. you know it doesn't mm. matter if it's rap today if i do dance hall tomorrow if i do if i do a drill beat like understand on lotness yeah yeah and yeah. i've got some other stuff that i'm working on that's about to come out that where I experiment my singing side like I did with EXO <laughs> sensation and so I'm a piano <laughs> to be honest with you I'm not an I'm a piano fan oh okay <laughs> All right. I, I don't know You're we love no honesty not working out that relationship yeah like, it's I'm not working out and that's just the way it is that's just the way it is mm. for everybody so even when you create music mm. you can't i don't feel like i should jump on my piano because it's a trend or because it's a business i've had a lot of people tell me like you know Cleo, at the end of the day it's business you need to just do it because you know it's business and i'm like yeah it's business but mm -mm. i don't want to really lose myself you know what i mean mm. i don't mind jumping on an i'm a piano type beat but i'm still gonna bring Cleo ice cream to that so it's just at that time that opportunity hasn't hasn't um come up yet for me but otherwise to be honest with you i'm not the craziest about i'm a piano i have a question um again wellington and i usually always have conversations when it comes to artists and wellington and i firmly believe that with creatives or artists once they, they've they've secured the bag the passion kind of dies, dies down, down. Mm. like we say Lakota, their pockets are full what are they going to do music for do you think yeah I <laughs> Do you think that the that would be you maybe the next few years? Because I, I can tell you're talking about how passionate you are as well. But do you think you'd ever come to that point as well? Just like, no, it's, in a, I've already secured the bag. What else? Let me just stop. Do you think there'll ever be a situation like that? I mean, I think things like that do happen. Mm. And it's understandable. Like, look at Rihanna. You know what I mean? She mm. secured her bag. <laughs> And no matter how much we are crying and begging for her to give us, I don't know if it's R8 or R7. It's not coming, girl. Forget it. <laughs> it's not coming. She's just giving us more pregnancy. Next and year, she's pregnant like, again. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, to be honest, I feel um, it's just all about your own, mm. how you feel at the time. And, and what it's bringing to you, the space that you're in, the energy that it's giving. Because it can get tiring, you know, sometimes when... You get to a certain level and you've made your money and then you still have people that are trying to put you in a box people that are trying to from record labels maybe trying to control you or even your fan base trying to control you and not accepting your growth mm. 
Mm-hmm. I'll give an example of one of my favorite artists, which is Lil, Lil Wayne um, or Beyonce or Nicki Minaj. Yeah. So it was a time when I really related to um, to all three. You know what I mean? I still love them. I'm still a huge fan of them, but I'm no longer a huge fan of their music per se. You know, because it's changed, or maybe mm-hmm. they're just offering something different, targeting a different type of individual and personality, and that just doesn't sit. It's not. It's not up my alley doesn't mean i love them any less you know but it's just also because i understand they need to grow they need to evolve they need to to um yeah they need to evolve i think that's the biggest word i can just say it's, it's about evolving mm-hmm. and sometimes you will without certain people and sometimes you evolve into something different where you don't see music as part of your um evolving you will see yourself maybe as a businesswoman like rihanna or uh, you, you get what I'm trying to say, right? We so, do get what you're I don't trying think to it, say. For me, yeah, she's still passionate about music. I, I, I strongly believe she is, but she just doesn't probably want to sing anymore and just be subjected to you people, ask people, judging and saying, ah, this song is not nice, ah, this song is not... Like, it's not about that anymore. It's not about how many sales I'm going to make. It's now about how I feel and what message I'm trying to convey. Who am I speaking to? What message am I giving? What is it for the listener or is it just for jives? You know what I mean? Everybody makes different music. Some people do jazz, some people do melodic rap, some people do I'm a piano, some people do whatever genre that you, you I feel genre is dead, so you just, people just create. True. And whatever that catches on, catches that is on. True. Speaking of that create, yeah. we hope a Lil Wayne collaboration is Most coming. Um, we saw the DM we that, want that We want that Lil Wayne collaboration. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cleo, for joining us on the upvote. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. You know what? Let's keep fingers crossed that that Lil Wayne collaboration does happen one way or another. Fasting and praying for you, girl. Fasting and praying.